Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Finally, we are back. Um, it's been a long time. We are excited to be back. We had to take some time off after this big bathroom renovation. We just needed some like project free time and with Murphy, our youngest, after she turned one, she just became a completely different person that was like way more high maintenance than before. So filming and editing and all that stuff just went kind of out the window. But we're back and we're excited. And this project, this video, this project we're doing today, this video we're doing today just came out of the blue. It wasn't something I was even thinking we were gonna be filming, but I'll tell you the story. Basically, I was on the hunt for a dining table. The round one that I got off Facebook Marketplace, I think I maybe posted it on, on Instagram, but I'll put a photo here. I was planning on making over this round table to make it more my style, changing out the bottom, making it like a pedestal bottom, because I thought, because we have a square dining room, it's like ideal, that's the ideal shape room to have a round table in, and I've just seen them all over the place and they're so cute. So that was my plan. After having sitting with the round table for a few months, it was very clear that it was feeling not right in the space. It was still jetting out into like the walk space a little bit and because our dining room is a pass through to the kitchen, to the living room, that's just like where we walk every day. Um, it was a little squished. So I was like, I'm not feeling this. I felt like the chair that was closest to that pathway was always getting moved to the side and it was just like awkward. So I said, no, we're not doing it. We're going with another option. So I took Brian along. We went to this warehouse sale, um, found, had no luck. I was thinking, hoping that they would have tons of tables to choose from, but no luck. So on the way home, what is on the side of the road, but a table that says free table. And it's a 10 foot long, like conference table. Like, I'm gonna, put, I'll put a picture here. It's like red, shiny vinyl, or not even vinyl, I don't know, lacquered table. Like, with a hole in the middle for like where all the, you know, phone cords used to go back in the day or whatever there were. Old, like 80s, 90s table. Anyways, it was free. It was huge, it was heavy. I said, immediately when I saw it, it was oval and it had these fluted edges and I was like, I know exactly what I'm gonna do with this. And I, I was like, all I have to do is get it home. Luckily I had Brian, I had Jake's truck and a stranger that pulled over to help because he saw that we wanted it and knew that we probably weren't gonna be able to get it up there by ourselves. Mainly because it's literally so long. Like, of course it's heavy. It's so long that you needed like, you know, at least three people so that two were on the ends and one was in the middle. Anyways, get it in the car, get it home. I'll put some reactions that Jake had when I brought it home. He was like, no. I don't, you're crazy. Like this is gonna sit around here forever, but that's not what happened. It ended up being, oh my stomach's growling. Should eat breakfast, I should start eating breakfast. Anyways, it ended up being like one of the quickest projects I've ever done. So let's get started. Okay, so first step was taking the table fully apart. So luckily, because it's technically a conference table, they're not worried about, they weren't worried about um, having it in pieces. And because it's so long, it has to be put together, you know, separately. And so there's brackets and stuff that you wouldn't see on a normal, like, dining table, probably. So I would. Actually, that was great for me because it never would have fit in my house if it didn't come apart easily. So, take it apart first thing first. Terrible things started happening when you walked away. 
so that's why I said. Next, we had to decide how big we wanted the table to be. So obviously we couldn't keep it at 10 feet and we needed to get rid of that hole in the middle. It looks like an umbrella hole, but it's obviously for like cords and stuff. Um, so I had to get rid of that. Since there was a seam already down the middle of the table, we just were gonna stick with that and make our own new seam, if that makes sense. Nail in the driveway. Hmm? Nail in the driveway. room for two people. Well, the table comes out to like here, so that'll be fine. And then the table comes out to like here, and that'll be fine. Yeah. Okay. Math, it ain't so bad. <laughs> so, I decided I wanted the table to end up being eight feet long, so I just cut a foot off of each side of the middle of the table. Stop. You want me to bring it out a little bit? So here we are cutting half of each half. Um, my dad was in town, so he actually got to help, which is really fun because, as you've seen on our channel, my mom's been around for a lot of the projects, but not usually my dad. So it was fun for him to be able to help. So I just pulled into Home Depot. I'm missing a few brackets to put. Um, since I had to cut that middle support piece into two pieces, I need extra brackets just to like keep it together and then attach it to the top. Also want um, bigger, thicker brackets for the top piece. Um, I don't know why. I guess it only had two to begin with, but I just want thicker ones. I don't know, I'm just gonna try to find some bigger ones. For extra support and then I'm gonna go ahead and get the primer I I'll show you what primer I looked up and what I think is gonna be best because it's a shiny surface I am gonna try to sand it a little bit before but I wanted to get a primer that was like clingy to shiny surfaces so that it'll just make my life easier and then I'm gonna grab some rollers also I noticed when we flipped um, up the two support bases there's one little adjustable foot missing which could make it like wobbly so I'm gonna see if they have any that are like the same size I'm not really sure I'm gonna do that but hopefully they have like universal sizes in those I'm not really sure but we'll see so let's go look Okay, that was a really stressful Home Depot run, so I did not film in there because I just had to focus and get out. Um, but I got all the stuff I needed. The only thing I couldn't find were the right size screws. They only had too long. So, I don't know. I'll have to look somewhere else. I have a few that I can start with, but I don't know if I have enough. But I'm gonna go ahead and add these to this support piece and I don't know if I should unclamp it or what maybe I'll flip found myself smiling more the moment you leave I feel down again I talk to myself on the floor just 
Okay, so this is all on the same day, you guys. This is day one of this project, and I'm already sanding. I started sanding the underneath side of the table to see I needed to do that with everything or if I was gonna be okay just doing it, just doing the primer. Because if I don't have to sand, then I don't have to sand. And I got a certain kind of primer that I ended up only having to use and not sand everything. Um, I did sand the edges a little bit because there was some, you know, little nicks out of it. But um, otherwise, the primer I got, which I'll link, is for shiny surfaces and doesn't need sanding, which is amazing. So I'm priming, 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 still day one. Okay, so Jake just told me that WD-40 works the same on gooey, sticky, adhesive stuff um, as Goo Gone. So I'm gonna try it and I'm gonna show you guys if it works. It's right on here. There was like a piece of tape that had a thing that said, or a piece of tape to paper that said free table. So I think it was outside for a long time so the adhesive was, oh my gosh, it's coming right off. I wonder if you can tell on camera. No need to have goo gone, just WD-40. That came all the way off. That's amazing. Oh my god, it's gone. Good job, good job, Jake. Now it was time to cool off because it was a hot, it was just still like summer and I am hot, hot, hot. I've been outside all day working on this thing and cold plunge time. I'm clearly not the best at the breathing part of the cold plunge, but it's been like the best thing, you guys. If you have a cold plunge opportunity, do it. It's awesome. So next day, bringing the table back inside. Um, as you can see, all the pieces have been primed. I wanted to bring it inside. I didn't want it to be outside anymore. I left it outside um, the first night because I knew there was no rain, but I was just worried. So brought all the pieces individually back together. Um, and I decided instead of putting it together first, I'm gonna paint all the pieces first because that just makes sense. I don't have to be like underneath things, like getting whatever. It makes more sense. Paint it first. So we're going black because I've just been loving the black rounded oval like really mid-century modern vibe with this table. So love this black. I'll link the color below. I spent a long night painting. <laughs> Luckily I have my shows. If I could tell you, I don't think you'd believe how long I felt this way. I'm begging you to stay. And if I could show you, I'd hope that you could see all the possibilities. There could be a place for you and me. And under the stars, you pack up your car, cause you're going far away. Next day, it's time to put the table together, and we came across a little issue. I wish I could stall, but I never call, and you're going all the way this year. this after 
I just need to document it. So we were off by like how big, how far apart my nails are. Like this much, maybe not even like this much on the measurements. Math, it ain't so bad. It's literally the size of the drill blade, probably times two. We just like drilled on the wrong, s or drilled, I'm not drawing. Cut on the wrong side of the line, whatever. Instead of having to redo that whole centerpiece, um, one side I bolted in with the um, these little guys that came with the table. There's holes in the base that connect to the table. But since we were off, we either had to redo the centerpiece or just push it and drill up through the holes with regular screws. It's not as secure when when it's lifted, but we're, we'll just be aware of that and not try to do that. Come here, mommy. Did you hit your head on the new table? No dancing on this table. Um, yeah, so something always goes wrong, obviously, but I am kind of a lazy DIYer and I'm not good at measurements, so it was bound to happen. But you, you were not gonna be able to tell, like I said, it's this much. There just would have been a huge gap in the uh, tabletop. Obviously, we're not gonna have that. So just pushing it that little bit and then uh, doing our own screws through the holes that are already in the base, just up through the table, it's just fine. So. We'll just be really careful when we're moving this right of there. You haven't been on camera in a while. We look like Valentine's. No! Ooh! Okay, so. Almost done! Almost done! Almost done! Hehe. <laughs> Hehe. This will only be a three day project. That's so fun. Oh. Ooh! Say bye bye! Bye bye! Say. I wish I'd let my mommy do more videos for YouTube, but I'm so crazy. Bye bye. Okay. Okay, after figuring out what to do to get the table back together, it was time to put the table back together. So here we are just like screwing brackets in, putting all the pieces where they're supposed to be. And then we've got another coat of paint. We're just doing so many coats because I just didn't, you know, we use our table a lot. There's hard silverware clanking around, blah, blah, blah. I just wanted there to be a lot of coats and then to do a lot of top coats after all of that. So next day, everything I read said to do like a little light sand before doing the doing another coat so here we are doing a light sand wiping it all down and here we go with another coat the way I feel when you walk in the room It's not optional How gravity just pulls me right to you To you mm -mm. After that coat dried, I did my first coat of Polly You're gonna find out this did not go well When you see it, see how milky it goes on And you see the roller marks That ends up being my issue so I didn't even think about not using a roller. I just figured it would be fine. But afterwards, when I was having all these issues with the milky texture, bub like not bubbling, it was just like showing. So I tried using a heat tool. Here's me with the hair dryer trying to just get like the white to fade. That ended up not working. So what I ended up having to do was a light sand again, another coat of black, and then put the poly on with something else. Whether it was a brush 
or a sponge or a towel. Just something that doesn't have roll marks and that's gonna go on evenly and a little bit lighter of a coat and then do multiple of those coats. So then we don't have any streaks, we don't have any milky residue looking buildup and it just is an actual clear matte coat. I hope you liked it. I hope you got inspiration from it. I hope you find something on the side of the road that you can make your own. Um, I love the way it turned out. I'm literally obsessed. Please comment below if you want more of these videos or if you would have done something differently or if you can teach me how to do math better when I'm working on these projects. Any advice, any thumbs up, anything like that is greatly appreciated. This channel is for you guys, so I hope that it brought you joy. I hope it sparked joy. Okay, thank you so much. Until next time, hopefully we'll be back sooner than we were this last time. But don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. And we'll see you next time.